Well, that's good. Played a lot of golf. You played a lot of softball. I did play a lot of softball, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Played on a queer city league, which yeah. was really fun. And, and we won. Yay! I already knew that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I was like, for once, I won in a league. <laughs> for what? <one>. Yes! <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. All right. So, yeah. Good. Still playing softball. I mean, yeah. now I'm playing Sunday, Monday, and Tuesdays. Only. 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 Yeah. As opposed to... Um, what was it? it was well, I was Monday, doing Tuesday. I was doing volleyball, right? So that on was Wednesdays, <laughs> and then I was playing <laughs> softball on Thursdays. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. One week I did play tu- Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday. and then played Sunday. Yeah. You're very. You're way busier than I was. <laughs> you know what I did? I stayed at home most of the time. I sat that, on the I sat on the porch, and uh, and uh, pondered life and <laughs> everything. No, I, I made it up to my mom's place for a hot second in uh, yeah. in July, but uh, but no, I spent most of the time on my porch um, getting eaten up by mosquitoes. It's so bad. Yeah, no, like I like I, I'm one of those connect the dots now. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. Like, I actually looked up the symptoms of malaria last night. Of course you did. I did. Well, I'll be just, just in case. Just in case. Just in case. The one guy had it. Or has it or something. I don't know. Anyway. All right. I think that's enough warm-up. So, all right. Inhale the good shit. Exhale the bullshit. Ooh. And hello and welcome to Pizza, Beer, and Life. I am your host, Roxy Freefall, and with me as always is my co-host, Miss Cherry. What's up? Hi. And we are here to drink beer, hang out, and tell you how to live your life. And one of these days, we will have pizza. One of these days. Yeah. We just we did not at the today. beginning. We did. We had it in the beginning. Um, but yeah. I don't know. Just stuff and things. There's nothing really preventing us from doing it. It's just that I, we just don't <laughs> until after we tape. I think that's it. I think we tape like so early in the day now that, you know, it, it's like having pizza at like three o'clock in the afternoon, at four o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. pizza anytime is good. I don't know. I can talk about that forever. Yeah. But I won't. Yeah. Uh, stop. So, but I do want to remind you all that we are currently taping at 8 Bar, which is located in Atomic Books in the neighborhood of Hamden here in Baltimore, where you can get books, you can get awesome toys, you can get weird magazines, you can get zines. Like, they are one of, apparently, and I learned this, like, a couple months ago or something, that they are one of the top bookstores in like or independent stores in the country that still sell like that's awesome like independent zines right so you can get those on the website and here in the store and all that good stuff but here at apar you can get beer 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 yay (laughs) so speaking of beer we're just gonna get right to it so today we are going to try um another peabody beer um, I know we just did Peabody last episode, <laughs> but it's been a while. It's been, yeah. I you mean, we, we took, we took a little break for, for the summer. Yeah. We took a little holiday, you know, not like Madonna holiday, but more <laughs> like, you know, like they do in Europe kind of, you know, and then, you know, a yeah. siesta, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So enjoying softball and <laughs> porch sits and things of that nature. So in any event, so you'll forgive us for the two in a row of, on the brewery, but still, Peabody's our favorite, and so, or my favorite. I, I love Peabody. Yeah, so yeah. It, it makes sense. So, mm-hmm. but this time around, we're doing something a little different, right? So we're going to check out their uh, tart, uh, tart ale, right, Cool Waters, but there's two different varieties, if you want to hold up yours. So yeah. I have the lemon meringue here, and Cherry has, what is that? Key lime. Key lime. So we are going to try these out, and yes. we'll probably, you know, we'll, we'll try a little bit of each other's. But we wanted to, since, you know, it was same brand in, like, two different flavors, you know, we wanted to kind of give it a try. Yeah. So, and uh, just for point of order, 
if you are looking to visit Peabody, they are located in the, uh, so I always get this wrong, like, I want to say Charles Village, like Abel, and I think that's still right. Like, yeah, like adjacent. You know? Yeah, like they're right there. Yeah. So um, I'd pretty much say the same thing. Yeah, they're right over there. Um, you know, you can Google them. They're, they have a Facebook, Instagram, Untapped, all that, at Peabody Heights Brewery. And uh, just go check them out. Great facility and all that stuff. And hopefully this is a good beer. So without yeah. further ado, we are going to see what this... Cool-ass arcade there, too. Oh, yeah, it's very cool-ass arcade. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's see if, you know, I can actually pour, pour. this. Yeah, I know. I think, I don't know. I might be doing it. I might have it. I think I do. I'll, I'll keep a little sip in mind for you. And same here. So look at that. Yes, I'm so proud of you. Yay. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. here's to us. Here's to you. Here's Cheers. the folks that are gone in the bar. And here's to everybody else. Cheers. Mmm. It's sweet. Ooh. Mine's yeah. mine's sweet. I mean, it's not, but it's not like it's not as tart as I was anticipating mm. it to be. No, like I'm not doing the yeah, you know, like I thought. I kind of like that from from a sour. Yes. Yeah. Well, technically, it's not really. Yeah, it's not a sour, it's, it's but nail. but they did say it's it's a tart, tart ale. Yeah. yeah. Um. It, I'm getting very small hints of the key lime. It's I would have I would like here. a little bit more of the key lime. Yeah, hold on, let's see. Okay, so I have the same opinion on this that I do on this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah, I'm just getting like small hints of the key lime. I would. I would enjoy a little bit more mm. of that because I do like key lime. I like okay. key lime pie. Yeah. I've had key lime sours before that mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not bad. It's just very light. And I, I guess I would like more of that, like, tartness yeah. in it. So. Yeah, almost as if it was just a tad too bland for me. Really? Yeah. See... I, for me right and i actually i i disagree with that a little bit really yeah because for me i so where i agree with you is that yes i think it should be a little bit more tart if it's going to mm -hmm. be a tart ale yeah it, it should be tart yeah um that being said i do think that both of them I mean, I, f I feel like I'm drinking pie in a glass. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not overwhelming. And I actually like that. Like that one beer that we tried, where was that from? Monument. Well, the the Monument the, the beer? Cherry, the, the cherry pie or whatever? Oh, no, 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 no. So, which one was that one? No, 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 no. We, are, we like the cherry pie one. Um, no, so we didn't do it on this show, but there are uh, monuments that you put out a key lime. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's like a key lime sour. And I had it, and it just, it was so syrupy, and it just was like, bleh, you know, like, uh, really syrupy. This is not that. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, this, it's not syrupy. And at first, my first sip, uh, my first sip, I was a little trying to, I was a little concerned, because I was like, oh, man, is this going to be syrupy? And it's not. Um, it has, I, yeah, you have I, a little bit more haziness to your right eyes. yeah very clear i think that's because of the the lemon peel maybe i don't know yeah um but where was i going with it i i think i understand what you're saying though about the flavor and yeah. here's why it's because all of the flavors in the front yeah all the flavors in the front and the back end just dip it just you know it there's nothing to the back end yeah I mean, there, I think there's, I, I get a little bit of lemon, and with that, I get, you know, the key lime. But it's it's all the flavors on the front end. And it hits you, like, it hits you on the front end, and then it just kind of just peters out um, after a while. So, I mean, it's at, this is 4.5, yeah. right? But 
why why it's hazier i'm not exactly sure how it's much not, is that it's not showing yeah so is um, that 4.5 like as well yeah yeah it's not showing like any of the like ingredients you know some, no some, some beers have like the main yeah you know like oh raspberry and vanilla and whatever right you know and so they don't and, have that on here to and kind of show with this like i mean i assume that there's definitely lemon in there you know i mean i don't know what kind of i don't know if they use like a different mash with each one to get to where they wanted to i don't know that might be a question for them so peabody heights here's our question bring up your gun. why is the lemon meringue hazy and the key lime not we are awaiting your answer so but you could always ask on saturday you could or they or i can tag them and, and you should probably do that oh i did that last time too mm -hmm. oh anyway but I mean, overall, I'm not like complaining i'm just giving my opinion no, because i do like it i it's just do no i do i like you know what i think my overall opinion of this is i wish i wish I saw or I tried this beer back in like May. Yeah, like it's, you know, because it's the end of August right now. Yeah. And, you know, we're getting into spooky season soon. And <laughs> I'm very excited for I know. fall. I'm, I'm actually excited for I fall. I am well. so happy for fall <laughs> and for all the bugs to just die. <laughs> anyway, but no, but that being said, it's, it is, it's a great summer beer yeah it, it, it's it, it it's a really beautiful summer beer it's it's a beer that i think i would be able to bring to parties or you know events and things like that and folks would enjoy it um but yeah like it's it's one of those things where i wish i found this beer a little bit earlier in the season because yeah. i could see myself drinking this you know a lot in the summer and then you know and, and then as it gets colder you know maybe not so much but yeah i enjoy it. i think it's it's not as crisp as I would like, but then again, yeah. you know, your lemon rings or key limes, you know, those kind of beers, they generally, there's, how do I, it's, I want to get away from the word syrupy because I don't want to say it's syrupy, but like, yeah. what am I looking for? Like, it's not, it's, mm, like, it's, I don't know, like, it's a little dull, maybe? Yeah. A little soft, like, it's a little, mm, you know again that's syrup but anyway yeah, not, it's not syrupy no but it's um, like almost there i get where i get what you're trying mm -hmm. to say i just i can't pinpoint the word that yeah it's somewhere in the middle best. of yeah it's somewhere in the middle of like crisp is on this end and syrupy is over here right it's like right here yeah you know, where like syrup's over here like it's right around here and i don't know but uh one out of ten I'll do with that one out of ten what would you give it six and a half okay no that's fair yeah i uh yeah i think yeah i'm teetering between six and seven yeah like six and a half six and a <laughs> half no. well yeah i think i'm there too i think i think i'm gonna go a little bit higher i think i'm gonna go seven okay um seven would i um would i buy a you know buy this in the liquor store in june yes earlier in the season i totally would but now that you know we're getting into fall maybe not yeah. i don't know yeah um however if i was at peabody and they had this on tap or a bar and they had it on tap would i order it yes i would yeah would i order it today yes would i order it tomorrow would i order it next week probably yeah so but yeah, yeah. i know that's that's weird you know would you buy a six pack no but would you order it at a bar yes i you know because I, I don't know six packs lives in my fr live in my fridge for quite some time they just do yeah you know, so i don't know but that's uh that's what i said so all right so peabody um i think well done yeah well done Nice summer beer. Again, this was Cool Waters, uh, Lemon Ring, and uh, Key Lime. Key Lime. So you can check them out. And again, uh, you can check out their socials and, uh, you know, go visit them over in Charles Village. So, ish.
in that esque. area. Charles Village esque. Abel esque. <laughs> you know, over there. Yeah. They're they're that way. <laughs> that way. Anyway. Okay. Quick questions. Da 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 da. All right. Uh, if you could join any past or current music group, which one would you want to join? Hmm? It would probably have to be one current. And okay. I would go with, this is probably not going to come as a surprise to you, but yeah. I would probably go with Odessa because then I could. Of course you like, would! I'd be like their backup dancer, just like. Of course mm, you mm, would. Mm, mm. I'd be like the one playing the drums on the, I don't even know how to play drums, but yeah, I'd figure it out just to be there with them. Yeah. I'm like, I can just dance on stage for you guys. That's totally fine. <laughs> just, you know, pole or not. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's my kooky ass dancing. Um, but yeah, uh, that would be mine. I'm I just, say. them live is just phenomenal. Okay. So. I dig it. Yeah. Uh, current or past movie group. So. Because of the stories that I've heard, <laughs> so I have two answers to this. Okay. Uh, stories I've heard past, um, I'd want to go on tour with the Go-Go's. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I heard a lot about the Go-Go's. <laughs> so, I mean. them and the Donnas, like, because it, it's along the same line, you know, like, I've had a, heard a lot of stories about their touring days and whatnot, and, uh. Yeah, I definitely would want to go back and, and tour with them and see yeah. what's up. Um, and then, I don't know. Like, you know, it, it, my obvious answer to everybody else would probably be, like, the Foo Fighters. You know, because, again, they just seem like they would be so much fun to tour with, especially after reading Dave Grohl's book. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, they just seem like they'd be a hoot to tour with. Or, um, I don't know. Yeah, and a lot of people would ask, well, what about Frank Turner? I don't know that I would want to tour with Frank Turner. Yeah. Like, that's a different answer entirely. But, yeah, I think I'm going to say definitely, the like, the Go-Go's. Like, I would want to tour with the Go-Go's just because of the stories okay. that I've heard. So I'd probably want to tour with them for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> well, you want to dance and stage. Well, oh, you want to tour with the Go-Go's for different reasons. Yeah, no, I, I get that. <laughs> about you. Correct. Yes. No, I understand. I understand. <laughs> this is what we call subtext. Anyway, uh, second question. If you could sit down with anybody to have a beer with and chat, who would it be? I love this question because my answer has not changed in like 20 years. Is there like hidden context behind this question? Like it can be anybody like past, present, future. Yeah, anybody you want. Uh, dead, alive. Sure. Why not? My friend Josh. Oh, um, that's that. Aw, aw. What was it about Josh that made him just so special? <laughs> Too many things. I know. Too many things. Uh, but to sit down and have a beer with and chat—that's like what we used to do. It was just yeah. like, but it was like beer sports. That was me and him. Yeah. Like. We were all, we were like bowling all the time. Yeah. We were golfing all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. It would. Yeah. Him. Yeah. I know that. I could pick anybody, but honestly, like I would choose that over any famous person. Yeah. In the world. No, I get that. So. I understand. I am gonna go with the famous person okay. angle. That's because, fine. like I said, this hasn't changed in twenty years. Yeah. You know. Sorry, and, to, uh, sorry to go that. Like, no, no, no. It's funny because if route. I were to do that, like I would say, my father, if I were to go yeah. that route, you know, yeah. because I haven't been able to talk to him in twenty eight. Uh, hold on, what year is it? Twenty seven. Hold on, twenty twenty five years. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So you know, yes, um, but you know, on the other side of the coin. Like, like I said, I, this, this answer hasn't changed in so many years. Sebastian Bach, lead singer of Skid Row. I know, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting looks from the peanut gallery, but this is why. <laughs> is because his, every time, like, I have watched <coughs> interviews with him, and the stories that he tells, not only are the stories are good, 
but he's actually a really good storyteller. Like, he really, just, like, watch one of those behind-the-music things or watch him talk about, like, his relationship with Axl Rose or, you know, any of those. And you'll see, like, you know, to sit, sit down and have a beer with the man, like, that would be rad to, to hear about, like, all, all that stuff. I okay. mean, yes, yeah. an obvious answer, again, would be Dave Grohl for the same reason, <laughs> you know. But like, I don't know what it is. Like, you know, I feel like, you know, Baz just would have, like, just some of those stories, you know, and also just to, I think he's one of the last that still actually does drink to boot. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if he got sober or not. So, anyway. Mm. Okay. I dig it. But, yeah, that would be, uh, that'd be mine. So, all right. Well, that was quick questions, and we're just going to close out on that. And go over to the main questions. Da, 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 da. So um, we have two questions for you today. And none of them, none of them have to deal with romantic relationships. <laughs> Woo! Shut the front door. <laughs> Yay! Was that by design? Probably. Anyway, so, but this first one comes from Carolyn uh, Hacks, who is a... Uh, advice columnist for the Washington Post and um, yeah no I really I liked this this question a lot uh, because I, well I'll, I'll get to it and you, I'm sure most people understand why my 40th birthday is coming up and I have always wanted to be a homeowner by 40 of course I always imagined being happily married long before that and buying the house together that hasn't happened. I don't want to put it off any longer. I'm in a good position now, and the market near me is good. Oh, good for you. Uh, but I feel right. deeply unsettled by the idea of buying a house now, alone, with space for me and no one else. Almost as if I'm conceding that I'm not going to find somebody to spend my life with. Is that completely dumb? How do I get excited about buying a house alone? Oh. You go ahead and take that one first. Okay. <laughs> so is it completely dumb? No. You know, I'm not going to say it's completely dumb because your feelings are valid. These are your feelings. You're feeling this way, and that's completely fine. Um, but, you know, it, it, you know, how do I get excited about buying a house alone? By being excited that you're at a point in your life that you are able to do this, to have this accomplishment for you yeah you know it's it's you know it's changing your the the frame of mind that you have around it rather than you know f for so long it was this thing of it was a milestone that had contingencies on it and now all of a sudden you're able to reach this milestone without contingencies that is something to be celebrated yeah, and also, you know, independent living is something to be celebrated. So I'm going to pause there because otherwise, because I'm going to get very overly excited about this. What do you, what do you <laughs> want to expand on that? So, um, yeah, I mean, just piggybacking off of that, yeah. like, no, it's not completely dumb. Like, mm -hmm. I agree 100% with you that, like, not many people these days can say that they are in a financial position to do it by themselves. So, like, the fact that you're in that position is, like... no, yeah. Like, bravo. Yeah. You know, yeah, bravo. Exactly. Um, Especially in today's market. And, like, I mean, obviously most people have that same kind of feeling, like, I want to find somebody, I want to find the one, and I want to, like, settle down, and I want to do this, and I want to have all these firsts with that person, and blah, 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 blah. But, like... Independent living is, like, also very, like, rewarding. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to, like, pay your own bills and stuff like that. And for the most part, like, Eat I don't know about... peanut butter in the kitchen naked whenever you want. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Sorry, go on. But, like, at this... <laughs> at the same time, like, I don't know about you, but, like, for me, like, that would be attractive. So, like... Yes! If... If you're like, oh, yeah, I own my own home, and I, like, did it by mm -hmm. myself, and, like, you never know. Like, somebody's going to be like, 
holy shit, this person is super independent. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. Like, they know, like, what they're doing with their life. Like, that's going to be attractive yeah. to other people. And, like, that shouldn't be, like, your main goal. But at the yeah. same time, like, having your shit together and being independent and being able to stand on your own two feet is going to, like speak volumes to other people yeah. and people are going to sense that about you if you just embrace the fact that you got here by yourself and i just say do it yeah <laughs> and the i mean and to add to that the other thing that it's going to do is it's going to help the relationship that you have with yourself yeah because really what this question like you know this question i would ask an even deeper question which is you know, you know, why do you feel like you have to be partnered up to do anything? Yeah. You know, like, why, why do you, I mean, yes, you thought that you would be in this place, but okay, you're not, and that's okay, too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's, I'm trying to figure out the best way to put, like, why, it's not a codependency, like, codependency thing, but, you know, it very well might be. You know, yeah. like why why is it that these milestones are dependent upon you know especially this one uh, with being partnered up because here's right. the other thing is that you can be partnered up and that partnership doesn't work out and you're still you know you're not only did you get your hat do you have the house but now you have to figure out how to split that house too i don't know that's a weird segue to it but yeah. i think it what what i'm getting to is everything is temporary Right, and I say that all the time. It's one of my favorite things. Like everything is temporary. The good, the bad, the ugly, it's all temporary. And so enjoy these moments while you have them and enjoy yourself as well. You know, like look at this maybe as an opportunity to start developing a better relationship with yourself yeah. and a better way of, of walking through life, you know, with independent living because when you are enjoying yourself and you're enjoying and this this will bleed into the next question as well but like you know when you're going out doing things and whatnot guess what that's when you're most likely able to you know find that partner you know especially um especially if you're doing things that you like to do but this is not about that this is about the house thing so <laughs> correct uh but yeah, but that's, how do you get excited about buying a house? Like just, it, it, it's, you, you're you buying a house on your own that's pretty fucking amazing. And I think it's just a matter of somebody telling you that's fucking amazing. It really is. Yes. Yeah. And having a partner to do that is not the end all be all. So anyway, all right, close that one. I like it. Okay. We'll close yeah. that one. All right. So this next question. So this is one of my favorite topics on the planet, right? It's the FOMO question. Da, 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 da. All right. How do you tell people you want to be included more? Mm. I am middle-aged and have a good amount of friends, but I rarely see any of them. Some of this, I will admit, is because of my schedule and that I am not available much of the time to do things. There are many times, though, I will see my friends' updates uh, a friend's updates on social media that they are hanging out and didn't invite me and it hurts. I do have some close friends who do invite me along to a lot of things, but I see other friends doing things and I am hurt that I wasn't thought of and oftentimes feel like the odd person out. Whew. I know I can't make it all the time, but I still want to be invited. You are to going first. I am going first. <laughs> you take your drink. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I used to be like this. Yep, me too. <laughs> I used to be like this. Yep. For sure. I'll, yeah. I will totally admit that. Yeah. Um, I have quite a few friends too, but I also have quite a few acquaintances that mm. if I see them out and about somewhere, like I'll stop and I'll have like a, you know, a casual conversation with them and I go about my business or I might even like sit and have a, have a drink with them because yeah. I see them out. Yeah, I don't know. I got to a point where, like, if people want to see me, they'll let me know. <laughs> if I want to see them, I'll let them know. Let them know. It, doesn't, it yeah. doesn't necessarily always have to be, like, them reaching out to me or me reaching out to them. Yeah. And, like, I had to get to that point where 
I, w- I was like, well, they're not ever reaching out to me. And it's like, well, are you reaching out to them? Mm-hmm. Like, I know the schedule thing, like, for this person kind of plays into that. Yeah. Um, and I get that. Like, for me, it doesn't make a difference because I work mm-hmm. mainly from home, line to, like, 8 yeah. to 4, and I'm good to go. But right, right. Um, I have had crazy schedules before. Um, so, I mean, I get it, but I, I just had to get to a point where, like, you know, if they want to see me or if I want to see them, I reach out. If they say no, fine. Like, you know, I still have, like, very close friends that I don't see very often. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as I see them, I'm, like, it's right back to, like, I saw them, you know, the night before or something. I don't right. know. I just, you just got to get to a place within yourself, like, feeling okay with, like, okay, maybe I did miss out on something, but, like, I'm okay with that because I just, like, I worked and now I can pay my bills. Or right. I decided to stay in because I had to work tomorrow and I didn't feel like right. being out all night and waking up super tired. Because um, I've, like, started to do that more where I'm, like, staying home yeah more oh yeah. like i play i do play a lot of sports and like yeah. that takes a lot out of me yeah and then to put like going out on top of that like mm. it's tough no it is it's really really tough yep um i don't know like like kind of with the last question that's something that's like a little bit deeper with inside you that like sometimes you have to be okay with just like being with yourself rather than like thinking that like you're gonna get joy from life from other people and being like and i'm an extreme extrovert yeah like and that's almost like the definition of an extreme extrovert we get joy from (laughs) other people and doing things so yes Yes. coming from me that's like a big thing to be like i am okay with like staying home and missing out on things now oh yeah like i'm still an extreme extrovert but like it's like, okay, I missed that one thing. Yeah. That does not mean that, like, my life is over and that I have no friends and I can't just, like, you know, go along on the next trip somewhere. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, I just had to kind of... And that's just a work in progress. That, that's something that I had to work on and, like, retrain my brain to mm-hmm. think that way instead of continuously telling myself, like, oh, well, my friends don't want to hang out with me. Or are they really my friends? And it's like, no. Like, yeah. You didn't feel like going whenever they were going somewhere, or they didn't feel like going somewhere when you were going somewhere, and that's okay. Right. Like, if they want to stay home, they can stay home. If you want to stay home, you can stay home. Yeah. Like, I think you're putting too much emphasis on the fact that, like, just because you have to work or you say no. Yeah. That everybody else's life has to stop. <laughs> and that's well, not the case. No, no. I mean, I, I mean, in I a sense. That way. Yeah, I'm well. In a sense. But, like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can't you can't expect to have an invitation every single time. Right. Yes. No. And and that's where I was going to go. Where, yeah. Which is you can't like, expect to have a, an invite every yeah. single time when you're constantly canceling or right or saying or no you or you can't or, like or something like. That. Or the other thing is is that like take the initiative to then reach out when you do have the time. Right. And that like for me too. You know, it, it's there are certain activity. You know, there are certain times where I want to hang out with certain people. Yep. And just get some time with certain people, yeah. you know, and catch up with, like, certain people. And that's okay. And it goes along to the same thing of, like, you don't have to be invited to every single thing. Yeah. And I have no doubt that this person is going to come back and say, well, I don't want to be invited to every single thing, you know. And, and, like, there's events where there's lots of people. And that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. But here's the thing is that, number one, like, especially, I'm going to use Baltimore as an example. There are a shit ton of things going on in Baltimore. There are shows. There are art openings. There are happy hours drag and shows. everything. Drag <laughs> shows and everything in between. You can just go. If you want to go to something, go to the thing. If you know that like there's going to be people that you know there, go. Like, I, it, it's, it's, you know, people, I, I don't think that, you know, the majority of people are so mean-spirited that if, if you were to show up at an event, you know, like, that is open to the public, you know, like, they're not going to poo-poo you showing up. They'll probably <laughs> embrace it and go, oh, my gosh, hey, it's good to see you. Like, 
Sorry, like I'm very, and I think one of the reasons I'm so like adamant about that is is yeah. because I again like you, I used to be that person where I would look and be like, oh my god, why aren't they hanging out without me? <laughs> <laughs> right, and then all of a sudden I realized, holy shit, I could have gone to that show. Yeah. Like they went, they went to it. You know, they went to an event. It was open to the public. I knew about it. I knew they were going. And I chose not to go for whatever reason. I didn't need to be invited. I mean, yes. It, is it nice to? It, does it feel good to to be invited and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah. But quite. Of course. But quite honestly, you know. I, I, I can't tell you, other than like a private party, like that's at somebody's house or a private event, I don't think I've ever really been invited to anything. I mean, now that I think about it, but yeah, like, I mean, like truly, no, that's a lie. I don't want to say to anything. (laughs) No, let, let me, re- I'm going to redact that because I know I have some friends who are watching this going, bitch, I invited you to that drag bingo thing and we went and we had a good time. I know somebody's doing that somewhere or I had tickets for this and I invited you and da, 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 da. So yes, they, but I, it, it's, it's a rare occurrence. Eh, this is, this is how I'll put it. It's a rare occurrence that I'll get actually invited to an event than just go. Right. Because most of the time, the way that it happens for me is like I choose to go, especially right now, because we we can see on social media, like what events people are going to, who's going to what, who's interested in what. Yeah. You know, and so we can like I can look like there's a show coming up Friday night. And I looked and I was like, oh, there's like 20 people going to the show. Maybe I'll go. <laughs> right. I mean, is it guaranteed that they're going to go? No. But well, I know at least one person there. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, I know, like, I feel very, I don't know, I, I'm very mm, about this, and I know, yeah. I'm getting very yeah. angry about this, and I don't mean to, because, again, I think feelings are valid, you know, like, you know, yes, does this feeling left out suck? Absolutely, it does, but that has more to do with you than it has to do with them. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Boom. 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 Like, we're done, by. <laughs> It does. It has more to do with you than it has to do with them. You know, it, it's, 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 you know, and, and I can wax all of this stuff. Like, you know, other people's opinions of you are none of your business. Um, you know, all of that, that shit, but yeah, it has everything to do with you and how you feel about your, you know, relationships and, um, you know, and about yourself and your own confidence and things like that. And yes, does it suck, you know, having other obligations? Of course it does. We all have other obligations and we, we do what we need to. Um, you know, but uh, I think the other thing that I'm going to point out is, you know, I do, there, there's a thing here that says, I do have some close friends who do invite me along to a lot of things, but I see other friends, like, I'm, you have people who are inviting you out to places. Right, yeah. Yeah. You do, like, it, like, and that's the other thing I'm going to, and that maybe you can expand on this too. I don't know if you got this sense as well. We are in, you, you said, I am middle-aged. We are middle-aged. Popularity contests stopped in high school. They're called senior superlatives. Yes, I'm sorry, <laughs> Senior superlative? Could you yes. please expand on that? That's what we called them. What What are senior superlative? What? You know, like, best personality, mm. um, class clown. Okay. Um, what is it, like, uh, most likely to succeed or yeah. most popular or whatever? Yeah. You, you didn't have those? Oh, no, we did. Oh. I didn't know that they were called senior superlatives. We called superlatives. them superlatives. I think that's what they were called. I don't know. Maybe not. I could I, have that wrong. <laughs> I, I, I'll have to look I at my know. yearbook. I mean, my yearbook's in know. my storage unit, but still. <laughs> Did you get any of know. those? God, no. Oh, my God, no. No, if I had got one of those, it would have been uh, I, uh, most like, apparently most likely to, to kick somebody's ass. 
And I didn't know this until, like, no joke, I didn't know this about <laughs> until about, like, 10 years later, till somebody, like, I bumped into somebody I went to high school with at a house party. They looked right at me, and they were like, I was scared of you. And I went, what? Are you kidding me? They said, yeah. When I first, because they got to my high school late, they said, when, and this was a dude, and he was like, when I first got there, they were like, you know, watch out for Roxy Freefall. She'll kick your ass. And I went, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. But yeah, like this isn't, it's not a popularity contest. It's, it's not, and that's what, that's, that, that's what this is also kind of screaming at me. You know, like yeah. this, you know, I'm not popular. You have friends, you have friends who check in and care about you. You know, like, you know, it, it's, you have people who do care about you. You have people who like seeing you, who enjoy spending time with you. You know, like first relish in that and also, you know, figure figure out ways just to enjoy your own company a little bit more and figure out ways to, you know, maybe just go do the thing. If you want to do the thing, go do the thing without the fear that nobody's going to be there. <clears throat> you know, like you can go do something on your own if you really want to. Like that's... I mean, yeah, is it great to feel wanted? Absolutely. Do I still have times when I'm like, wow, like everybody's hanging out without me and I'm sitting on the couch eating pizza, like what the fuck? And then I realize, <laughs> I'm like, well, wait a minute. I, you know, I chose to be on the couch eating pizza. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. I mean, FOMO is real. And here's the other thing I'm going to say. I know, one more thing. Get off of social media. Yeah, because it's going to bother you that much. Yeah. Well, and also, I'll guarantee you that these instances that you are feeling like you're not involved in something are a lot fewer than what you've built up in your own head. Yeah. And the reason is, is, is because you're just seeing it on social media. Right. And social media like exaggerates everything, you know, and everybody's putting their best face forward most of the time. Yeah. So really, I think these instances are a lot fewer than you actually think that they are. So anyway, that's a good point. Do you yeah. have do you have anything more to say? No, on that? that was a good way to close right there. OK. Yeah. Awesome. All um, right. Yeah. Totally a good point. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, then everyone we'll tr tries to put that up. Yeah, say social media. I want to look cool on social media. Oh yeah, like, no, hundred percent. I I, I'm trying not to care about social media. I'll post on there, but I don't really care who sees it or what's going on. Like, yeah, I'll scroll through through it just because I'm like not doing anything. Yeah, what I think is hysterical is uh, like every uh, I've this past year I've posted like a lot of I've used the story function on the Instagram a lot more than anything, right? Yes. And, but what's hysterical? Well, and I think one of the reasons, and this is just like plain old curiosity, is because you can see who viewed it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I, I, and I really enjoy, I really enjoy watching. Seeing who, seeing, uh, oh seeing who pops up because every once in a while I'm like, oh, you're still there. All right. I haven't talked to you in almost a year. Uh huh. Hey. Uh huh. How you doing? <laughs> what's up? Anyway. But yeah, but I yeah, that's one of the things I worked on. I'm working on currently is yeah. less social media time. I think it's good for everybody. So, less social media time. Read more books. Do more things. As we're like here, we're live on Instagram. Watch us. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Me on social media. <laughs> yeah, and on YouTube. <laughs> we're on YouTube. <laughs> but at least YouTube, you can just watch at your leisure. It doesn't that's have true. to be like right then and there. Yeah. No, that's very true. So. All right, are we going to close this one out? Yes. Okay, we both had very strong opinions. All right, wait, that, that was weak. There we go. Wait, one more, that was... Hey, we got it. Okay. <laughs> ah, well, and on that note, that was an episode of Pizza, Beer, and Life. And we didn't talk about romantic relationships on this one either. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I was happy about that one. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We'll get back to that nonsense before you know it. So, anyway, thank you so much to our host, Apar, located in Atomic Books, which is in the Hamden neighborhood 
of Baltimore. You can check them out at atomicbooks.com for and also on their social medias, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and all that good stuff for more information about their hours and like their online store and what beer that they have currently in the cases, which in includes Peabody Heights. <laughs> so you can check out Peabody Heights also in Baltimore. I highly recommend checking them out, as does Chick. Right? You recommend checking them out, too? Yes. I don't want to speak on your behalf. You're sitting right here. I mean, I'll be there Saturday. So there you go. So they have great events. Please go check them out. And uh, also, like, that's it. Just, uh, I don't know. Be, be kind, kind to, to each, each other. other. There you go. <laughs> oh. And we'll see you next month. We will see you next month. Yes. I promise. We have we took a little break, and now we've gotten our shit together. So. Kind of. I need to get my shit together. Yeah. So she had her shit together. I need to get my shit together. And it was good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Okay, bye. Bye. Have fun. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Bye. <laughs> oh. <laughs>